Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DF Ch DFS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about uh, the February 24th four game League of Legends DFS slate. Um, welcome back, everybody. Um, we are back on the four game slates. We're going to have one today or tonight, and then uh, for the next couple nights at least, um, Friday night and Saturday night. So that should be a fun fun three day three nights in a row and we sprinkled that with you know some lcs and lec here and there so you know we have full full throttle esports uh slates going on so yeah so i i'm i'm you know honored to uh to be joined by you guys and hopefully you guys find these videos helpful and if you do find these videos helpful and informative please please uh hit the like button below um it would just mean a lot. I know the last video um, that you guys did a really good job hitting that like button. So please, please uh, hit the like button below. That would mean a lot to us. All right. Without any further ado, we are going to talk about um, the two games in China first. We have some closer matchups today. So I do think um, we have a pretty good edge um, in terms of selecting uh, the the you know the winner uh, match prediction and kill upside, I think are gonna be you know these these are gonna be more important than ever. Um, so yeah, let's dive in with the first game being the ninjas in pajamas versus anyone's legend. Um, by the way, that I still think that's a terrible name, ninjas in pajamas. But you know, who cares? I'm not a rich owner that can own a team like that and name whatever the team and you know. <laughs> So anyway, all right, NIP versus AL. Um, both teams have been kind of iffy. Um, anyone's legend probably has been one of the worst teams in the LPL so far. Probably the bottom two or three team for sure. Um, whereas NIP has been very, very up and down, up and down. Um, now they're starting Dream again in the mid lane over Pout. I believe that's how you pronounce the other guy's name but anyway uh dream has been all right i mean he started the last series for them and he was okay um you know we'll see how he fares against pins pins is, has been really bad in, in my opinion um i think he has been the weakest link for al um i think betty and Zhao Hao have been okay at least looking at the metrics um from what my research so I do think Dream is going to be in a really good spot here tonight um, if you are stacking ninjas in pajamas. Um, and then XLB has been pretty good and Fotic has been pretty good. So I do think NIP, you know, on its eye test should be a better team in this matchup like this. Now, what do the metrics say? So let's look at that. So for this matchup in terms of kill upside we have total kills over under is set at 24.5 and then combined kills per minute at 0.78 and nip pay, plays a little bit faster than al um so if you are stacking nip i think you have a pretty good kill upside tonight and it is also supported by these key metrics that i tend to look at a lot um nip has an advantage in all of these, except for the earned gold per minute that I compare between these two junglers, but it's a minimal difference so that I'm going to ignore that. So the other metrics, like I said, that I saw is jungle control percentage and lane control percentage and gold spend percentage difference, all favoring NIP. So I think that tells me that NIP should be the better team. And like I said, my eye test, just watching these teams, having watched these teams, um, I do have to favor NIP, and like I said, I think the big, biggest, the weakest link for AL is in the mid lane, and I think um, Dream coming on, and I think that's going to be a big, big, big difference for NIP. I think this is a great, great play or a great time and great spot for Dream to get things right and kind of build up his momentum as the new mid laner new starting mid laner for NIP. So I think, I think it's a really good spot for him personally um, in terms of DFS. Yeah. Like I said, I think I'm going to have to go with NIP to win. Um, now it's going to be two to zero, two to one. I do think AL could take a game off, but I'm actually going to go as far as say, I'm going to say NIP wins two to zero. 
I think Dream over Pins is going to be too much to handle for a L. Um, Fotek and Betty. Actually, I'm just going to say the bottom lanes for both teams are wash, basically. Um, are about even. About even. I, I'm going to have to favor a little bit toward Betty, but I think Voltic has been pretty good, and I think they have a better support in Duo over Sword Art anyway. And then XLB and Xiao Hao, both aggressive, tend to be generally aggressive junglers, so they kind of even out as well. And then the top lane, they're okay, right? Like, there's I, I'm not scared of either guys. Invincible versus ZDZ. ZDZ used to be a, probably a better player than Invincible, in my opinion, at least. Um, but, you know, uh, like Victory 5, and Ninjas in Pajamas, they used to be big Victory 5, and Invincible was okay last season, and XLB was okay, and yeah, I mean, like I said, I think it's it's going to be the mid lane that's going to be be the difference maker, Um, and as mentioned, the key metric support NIP, so I'm just going to have to go in favor of NIP, but um, I'm going to have a, a good GPP sprinkle uh, spot for AL, if you want to go that route as well. All right. Um, the next matchup, though, is going to be a closer matchup, at least based on the odds. It's Team WE versus uh, Rare Adam. This is what this one is very interesting. I'm still having a hard time coming up with my match prediction, um, and I'll explain to you why um, in elaboration. Um, but first, the total kills over under is set at 25.5. So it's a little bit higher than the the other LPL matchup that we just talked about. And then combined kills per minute is set at 0.77. Both teams actually play at the exact same kill pace at 0.77. So that's, that's an interesting uh, little nugget um, that we don't often see. And then the jungle control percentage, you see Rare Adam actually has a very significant percentage difference at point, uh, 4.8%. That's quite significant, in my opinion. And then you see the lane control percentage is also um, not dominated, but Rare Adam has an advantage there, a slight advantage at 0.5%. And then you see gold spend percentage difference, WE with a minimal difference at 0.2%. And then earn golds per minute for the junglers between Hung versus Layan. Layan actually has been pretty good for Rare Adam, in my opinion. I think in those wins that they've had, yeah, I mean, Layan is definitely the stud that has carried that team um, al along with Strive. So, like, I am going to have to go with Rare Adam actually here today. I think, you know, a lot of these key metrics, including um, the jungle control percentage, that is quite significant. I mean, you see NIP over AL is like the jungle control advantage was, I think, 0.9%. <laughs> now, you see Rare Adam like at 4.8%. So that's, I mean, that's much, much bigger. And, but then at the same time, like maybe Vegas knows that something, maybe Vegas knows something that I don't. I mean, you see Rare Adam is actually an underdog. But nonetheless, I mean, I don't really look at the odds. Maybe I'm starting to look at into the look into the odds too much. But just looking at the analysis and looking at the eye test, yeah, I mean, WE has been a better team slightly. But I do think Red Adam in their wins, they've looked really good. Um, they that they definitely have the capacity and capability to be able to beat, um, Team WE. Um, so like I said, I think it's going to be a close one, but like I said, I'm a more of a data driven guy. I look at the lead these metrics. Um, if I think it's going to be close, just based on the eye test, comparing the rosters. Yeah. I'm going to have to, you know, be swayed. I'm going to be swayed by the data and the metrics. So I'm going to say rare Adam pulls off an upset over W E. Um, supported by these key metrics especially the jungle control percentage uh advantage in favor of Layan and rare adam um now 
Hope has been really good in the bottom lane um, ever since he came over from JDG. And then Shanks is Shanks. I mean, he's one of the probably the most serviceable mid laners in the LPL. He's not elite in my opinion, but he is very good. Um, and now Strive will have a will have his hands full against Shanks. So we'll see how that how that goes. But you know, you know how much more emphasis I put in the jungling position, and Leanne actually has been really good. So I'm gonna call, make this uh, an upset call for Rare Adam. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Team WE wins as well as a favorite. So I'm, I think I'm going to have some GPP exposure as well. Have exposure to both teams if playing ME. Okay. All right. Now, in comparison in Korea and the LCK, we have, I'm sorry about the mic, but uh, we have two very lopsided matchups, at least what they're projected to be in, in terms of odds. We have Gen G at minus 1200 versus DRX plus 650. And then Dom, D plus Kia at minus 1000 versus Kwangdong Freaks KDF as an underdog at plus 550. Yeah. <laughs> LCK, I think the discrep uh the differences um between the elite elite or top teams versus you know bad teams is much bigger and much larger. It's a much larger gap between those uh those teams in Korea versus LPL. Uh thus explaining the odds, um heavy odds in favor of these favorite teams. Genji, um Thorin, Pina, Chovy, Pays, and Delight are starting. But, you know, one thing I would like to note is DRX. Um, Krako started the last series, I believe. Um, but Juhan actually came in and played one of the games in the series. So we'll see. I haven't really done any research in the Korean media to find out whether Krako or Juhan is starting. But since this is the first game in Korea, we will have confirmed starters uh for drx but then at the same time are you really gonna play drx in this matchup do you really need to know you know if you want to play Krako or juhan um, based on the starting status i'm not gonna have any sp uh, exposure to drx so it doesn't really matter to me um but i just wanted to let you guys know that you know it will matter a lot if you are starting obviously the player if you are playing a player that that's not starting so um, if you are playing DRX, good, you know, kudos to you. Good luck to you. Um, but you know, just make sure that you, you know, uh, look out for that confirmed lineup before the the slate lock. Um, but yeah, I mean, without any further, uh, you know, comments, I think Gen G is definitely going to win this. Um, you see the key metrics here uh, listed on your screen. Jungle control, lane control, and all those metrics you see on the screen that Genji is heavily, heavily favored, um, has an advantage, significant advantage in all of those. So I'm going to have to go say, you know, I'm going to have to say Genji wins two to zero. Now, is this going to have a pretty good kill upside? Yeah, I mean, it's projected to have a good kill upside compared to the other LCK matchup that we'll talk about. But if you are playing an LCK team today as a stack, player stack, you want to use Genji over anybody else. So that's where I'm that's where I stand with Gen G in this matchup. And then in the next matchup, like I said, D plus Kia is a huge favorite at minus 1000 over Kwangdong Freaks. But you see the total kills over under is set at 18.5, and the CKPM is set at 0.58, which is like I mean, it's that's like historically low under 0 0.60, usually. That's like really, really low. Um, so I, I don't think I'm going to have any uh, exposure on these unless you're playing like one off Damon Kia player, which, you know, it can do that. I know I think last series or last slate that Damon uh, D plus Kia was on. Some people played Kana in the top spot, top lane spot as a one off um, with the LPL stacks. So I, I get it. I mean, it could happen. And it, you know, it depends on how the rest of the slate goes. But if you are looking to play one-off players from that one, D plus Kia or Gen G, 
you know, as those favorites in LCK. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good idea to differentiate your lineup in the big main GPP contest. But like I said, as a primary or secondary stack, I would not target D plus Kia because their kill upside is so, so low. You know, I, I would just consider using one of those players as one off or using DK or Kwangdong Freaks as a, or probably D plus Kia as a team slot um, play there. Now, just looking at the key metrics here today, though, um, D plus Kia, um, I agree with the odds. I mean, D plus Kia should win, but their metrics are not that much better than Guangdong Freaks compared to Gen G's over DRX. So obviously Gen G is more likely to win just looking at the, the analysis, but D plus Kia also has pretty good, pretty good advantages, obviously, over Guangdong Freaks. But you know, I just wanted to let you know that Gen G is probably a little safer pick than D plus Kia. Yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys today. Um, like I said, if you please uh, hit the like button, if you like this video, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, yeah, good luck out there. And if you let me know, please, uh, if you have any questions. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.